On this panel today, we have with us Mr. Sid Talwar, co-founder and partner, Lightbox. Mr. Sid is a co-founder and partner at Lightbox, an entrepreneur at heart. Mr. Sid left NIT to get back in the startup game. Over the next few years, leading up to Lightbox, he has advised several startups, angel funds, and a very special NGO called Magic Bus. We also have with us Mr. Amit Ramani, founder and CEO of Office. Mr. Amit Ramani is a co-founder and CEO of Office Space Solutions, which is India's largest shared workspace company with 40,000 seats across 75 centers in 11 cities in India. He started Office Space Solutions with the vision of revolutionizing the Office Space delivery ecosystem in India through technology-backed just-in-time solutions. We also have with us Mr. Jinesh Shah, managing partner, Omniworld. Mr. Jinesh co-founded Omniworld with Mark Khan in 2010. Omniworld is a venture capital firm based in India, which funds entrepreneurs building the future of agriculture and food systems. The panel will discuss about tax benefits and funds that have been announced by the central government and states devised politics. Have they been able to address the core issues that can help the Indian startups thrive? This session will be moderated by Mr. Saurabh Kumar, Editor Special Projects, Entrepreneur Media. Over to you, Mr. Saurabh. Thank you, Muskan, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, in this session, we will talk about the uh, relation between uh, the government and the startup space and try to understand uh, what, uh, what it will require uh, to move towards a matured ecosystem. And before we, uh, we, we start this session, I'll uh, request all our attendees, if you have any questions during the uh, course of the conversation, you can post them uh, through the Q&A box or if you're live on Facebook, you can put it on the comment section. We'll try to take up as many questions as uh, possible. So, uh, uh, thank you, Sid, uh, Dinesh, and uh, Amit for joining me here today. So, uh, you know, I'll start with a very quick response from you. So, the center has enabled various support schemes. Uh, they have set aside uh, funds, and you know, there have been tax benefits. Even states have their own schemes for everyone: startups, investors, uh, incubators. Uh, you know, very quickly, if I can come to uh, you know, maybe starting with Sid, come to you know, what do you, what's your first uh, uh, you know impression of what has been done by the government, or and if you think there are pain points that needs to be addressed. So I, I think uh, look, I think we have a long way to go. Um, where the ecosystem is very young, um, and um, if I looked at the U.S. ten years into their ecosystem developing for venture, um, especially in the startup. In, the, in, in technology startups, uh, uh, the government wasn't doing very much at all or even had any clue of what was going on in that space. And so I, I think uh, we're very much in um, the very beginning of the first inning. And the fact that we're discussing whether it's effective or not, if they made a mistake or not, rather than saying, can they do something? I think that's a very big deal. Um, and so I, I'm, 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 I'm eager to see how the next 10 years hands out. And look, anyone who's in this business, uh, uh, whether it's Amit from a founder standpoint or Janesh and I from an investor standpoint, we're in it for decades to come along. So uh, we're not looking at, you know, uh, stopping uh, in the next two years and hope that the government does something before we stop doing this. So I think that that's a big deal. I, I think the, the, the one other thing I would just say very quickly is I, I think the things that they have done, the sentiment has been in the right place their, their mindset has been in the right place but i feel like there's a lot of baggage that comes along with uh, uh the government putting any scheme in place and so and it, it, it makes the scheme unfortunately more arduous than it needs to be although the sentiment is correct so for i mean for decades the government has been forced to create schemes trying to be mindful of anyone you know finding a loophole in the scheme and so they turn to airtight every single aspect of the scheme so no one can you know, go around the scheme. And as a result of that, it, it kind of defeats a lot of the original sentiment. I think some of that has happened uh, to a large extent in some of the schemes that are here. I won't go through them one by one. I'm sure we'll discuss some of them um, on this thing. But I think that's been the core that I hope improves over the next decade of, of development as far as government relations with um, our sector. Mm -hmm. okay. Janish, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, uh, thanks a lot for inviting me. I mean, I echo Sid's viewpoint. Right? I think 
the government for one at least has been in the last 10 years have really recognized startups and even startups a clear space for itself right it was i mean 10 years ago i mean early part of 21st century i mean we talk of startups and government also was cool as what was startup right so uh, from that point to where we are today i think th- things have been much better uh, i think i agree with sid's view point saying that uh, government does a good job of making the noise about startups the schemes what they're doing it but in the process of trying to ensure that no one is trying to take an undue advantage i think the government probably has a package of its own own experiences in the past that whatever schemes that came out there were some loopholes that people tried to take the, take take benefit of that so government is trying to make it create a web of around things make up making too many controls having only the government officials or the uh, related uh, organizations look at those schemes and not really giving a startup or the private sector a freedom to operate within within uh, with some flexibility i think that that baggage remains uh, but look i think uh, from my perspective uh, i think for once government is very gungo and talks about startups but the the give budgetary allocations they're making plans for uh, uh, funding funding the startups and the venture funds i mean they're also nudging the private sector to get more and more capital i mean we saw in the last couple of days that even the private pension funds are allowed to put money in ai funds so i mean government's doing everything uh, at least doing making it look right i mean how things will shape up how things will evolve i think it's only matter of nuances and details but overall it looks to be in the right direction i mean i have no complaint on that uh, overall it's a decent start let's see how things progress right i mean like like it still says that we are here for multiple decades i mean VCs don't worry about few ups and downs. If the intent is right, hopefully we'll get price results at some point. Okay. You know, you both talked about uh, you know uh, that uh, you know at least in the past decade or so the intentions have been right. But you know the ecosystem is not new. It has been there for a long, long time. So do you think that we missed some? Yes, we had a. that decade maybe before that we could have moved faster uh, that time and uh, you know could have been different uh, because most of the schemes that you know we see have been implemented or uh, been uh, you know announced in the past 5 6 7 8 years so do you think there was a there, there was a period that is a lost decade if i may say so amit so um, you know i think uh, saurabh uh, just like uh, janesh and sid said obviously the government has done uh, the right things right i mean clearly i think two three things which they did which is uh, very very impactful in the last at least 6 uh, 7 years one uh, the pr around startup so if you looked at let's say pre 2016 right before the summit happened it was not cool to be an entrepreneur in this country right nobody wanted to be an entrepreneur so that uh, mind shift that happened which allowed people to it was cool to be an entrepreneur you could take that risk and not look for your uh, stable job i think is a great pr campaign that happened and that's the result today you see all the outcomes in a very very short time frame of 5 years with 45 unicorns and all sorts of other uh, great things that have happened to the startup ecosystem i think was a great initiative by the government second i think clearly uh, they have understood that funding was required for the startup ecosystem to take off now till about a year back the fund of funds of 10000 crore had only 700 crores taken out of it today it is 4500 crores right so clearly government is hearing what the uh, entrepreneurs and the vc and the p uh, you know partners are, are clearly putting out there uh, to your point uh, could this have happened 10 years ago i don't think so because my clear fundamental point is that if you did this let's say 2002 or 2003 let's say 10 12 15 years ago there was not enough talent in the country right because the it its was transitioning from a bpo to a kpo it's only in the last 10 years that we can claim that there are innovation and research centers in this country clearly to be an entrepreneur and be an entrepreneur of a high growth scale business you have to keep innovation at the core of it you tried to do this 10 12 years ago i don't think there was talent available in the country to drive this at the space that is being driven today the reason we went from 5 to 45 unicorns is because the government had the foundation laid of the it its developing into a more uh, mature ecosystem talent became available the city infrastructure became available 
uh, imagine 15 years ago if you were trying to do uh, phone payments i mean there was no way uh, there was no phones uh, uh, to be able to do that there was no backbone or uh, you know uh, infrastructure both in terms of either roads or it or wireless infra etc none of this would have happened at all and i think uh, one a uh, big move which happened which drove the whole fintech system was a uh, deliberate move by the government was demonetization i think that's the reason we see today the fintech industry is uh, spiraled into a different rocket altogether and again none of us wished covid but covid came as a big booster for all things tech right padmaja spoke earlier about the uh, revolution that's happened because of it i think clearly it's happened because it was the right timing and the right uh, strategies by the government i don't think we lost a decade i think we might have moved a bit slow but clearly i think the timing is right uh, and and we are poised for the future right now. okay all right so did, so did you uh, do you concur with uh, what uh, amit says that you know we haven't lost a decade we are fine the pace that we have done the timings that uh, you know the government has uh, in which the schemes have been implemented um yeah i think for different reasons i think uh, i i i agree with amit that uh, we haven't lost a decade for sure and i i, I think uh, part of it is the ecosystem was very small like amit said i i agree um i think part of it is also that our knowledge base is very small even today um we don't have we have not we are still learning how as investors how we should invest as founders like amit how uh, they should build their businesses out the 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 people we learn from are not necessarily in our country um they're speaking from their own country with experiences they have we have to we can't duplicate that we have to imbibe it and we have to be able to reconstruct it for ourselves and we then have to share our learnings with the government the government is doing many different things we're doing one thing um and that takes time and we will make mistakes we will make mistakes the government will make mistakes and we will learn from it and so i think we might lose more time also uh, but there's no loss of time uh, in so much so it's more about our ability to be able to constantly try to do better than we've had before and and as janesh was saying earlier um we are better than we were before and we will continue to get better um it will take time um it's and i think if anyone is hoping that things will change very quickly uh, they can't they, they shouldn't be building either a business or a fund um in 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 india uh they should uh, we understand that there is a reality that we have to work with um and we understand it's going to take its own time um the fact that i think amit saying that you know how much pr has helped i comp- we travel around the world i'm sure everyone on this panel I mean we were here before the PR kicked in like Amit was saying and we were been here after the PR kicked in we, before uh, our prime minister said certain things after our prime minister said certain things I mean uh, we're flourishing as far as I'm concerned if I if you told me you know in 2021 this is going to happen way back in 2014 I I I would probably not have put us where we are today I I, I honestly uh, so uh, and I think uh, Amit is right a lot of that credit goes and so uh, to 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 many different parts including the government and i mean that's uh that's a very very big deal um they can do more yes everyone can do more everyone can do more yeah. right you know it's very interesting that we are done by the government and comes from the right from the top obviously it means a lot for it's a message for across the world uh, for the entire ecosystem so you see what the other leaders of these countries are saying right now sort of what is the chinese premier saying right now or you know what is um, uh prime minister johnson saying in great britain or uh, uh prime uh, uh, merkel saying in germany you, i have a, i have heard anything uh, you know so there is a this this just shows where 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 mindsets are right now whether they're doing enough or not we're talking and that's a really big deal i think talking at least gets things going sorry i didn't mean to interrupt Yeah. No, no. Obviously, any time you want, anyone, if you want to, you know, add because I'm just here to listen to your thoughts. Uh, I'm just here to initiate the uh, initiate the conversation. So, uh, you know, uh, 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 we all talked about, you know, the baggage that uh, that you know there is. The government comes with some baggage, and uh, obviously, there are. It's an evolving process. Everything cannot be fixed. So, you know, there have been issues like there were angel tax issue earlier, which you know they have tried to kind of. 
uh, uh, you know address now and i was looking at a lok sabha reply a few days back and uh, you know the number of uh, uh, it's there is been a 93% uh, jump between 2019 and 2021 uh in which uh, you know these uh, uh, the uh, dpiit registered startups have uh, sought for angel tax exemption so you know in terms of these specific uh, issues jinesh do you think there is one particular pain point that you would really want uh, to be solved uh, whether it's from the uh, investors point of view or whether it's from startup point of view yeah i mean i mean i sort of i i i think what you made a point about the uh the government package and legacy it's i think it's not i mean i'll tell you from my perspective right i mean uh it's it's not the intent is wrong i think the problem is that when it gets con- uh communicated from top to the bottom there's a lot of chinese whisper around it right and the person who is really handling or or is the representative to the startups or to the investors completely sometimes messes things out right i mean uh, it's like i mean the the tax laws in this country are so so complicated that the and the guys at the bottom the assessing officer zero clue what a startup is right i mean imagine around 5 years ago i used to get uh, before the angel taxes notices start so we used to get notices from the income tax department that how can you value companies which are in seed and giving them 20 30 40 50 crore valuation i mean And it took us long. It took us one two years to explain for each and every company we did that. Uh, but hopefully that communication is improving. That those instances are going down. Uh, I think it's just going to take some time. Uh, what I need, I mean, if you ask me what one thing I need, which if we can get it, is a certainty that in next ten years, if the government case said this is the rules, this is what the laws are, this is what every state has agreed, for next ten years we will not change it. right i mean i am not worried about putting more rules or more regulatory framework but the issue is that there is so much of uncertainty right i mean simple things like we been as as a fund as as a as a industry we've been talking about saying can we have management fee management fee reduction in the gst or at least have some carve outs around it i mean government listens to us talks to us uh, but some point doesn't 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 do what it needs to do right and at the same time they are incentivizing us to create funds in india create amcs in india which is really counter intuitive right you you want us to put everything here then we will we will do it but at the same time you creating so many hurdles that it's difficult for us to take the call with with a with, with the real 100% surety that if i do if i move my fund to let's say ifc uh, uh, ifsc center in, in gandhinagar nothing the rules will not change for 10 years right currently the government is in a mode to encourage investors to put put the funds in india get all the investors in india and say we will not 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 get any reduction but i am not sure that my fund which is going to be 10 to 15 years of life the government will not tweak the rules i mean the government historically has done i mean i mean retrospect to tax impacts have changed laws i mean we been fighting on every time whenever we do a structuring for transaction i mean government will come out with a new fdi guidelines and for them it's just a piece of guideline but for the investors for the entrepreneur it's just like running around here and then to figure out that we are not messing up with the system, with, with the law right so this is the biggest concern i have so if government can say for this next next decade these are the rules this is final no discussions then we are all happy that would be one thing which i would want mm-hmm. yeah stability of law because investors want to see So stability in law. Uh, Amit, what, what, what do you think? I mean, is uh, anything specific that you think is not at the right place and needs to be thought about? Yeah, I understand that this government, uh, the current dispensation, at least had done a lot uh, for the startup ecosystem. But still, I'm sure that that. I mean, you are, you are an entrepreneur. You go out. You operate every day. Do you, do you think that okay, if this thing was different, I would have done it better? Sure. so uh, sorab i think uh, every uh, startup probably has a bit of a different uh, issue that comes up uh, as as dinesh said uh, obviously from a vcp standpoint is clearly about you know stability i think from an entrepreneurial standpoint i think a couple of points which are very very important uh, to help the ecosystem one i think funding still continues to be uh, very very patchy right even the fund of funds as i said you know after 6 years into announcing it you have not even been able to uh, deploy 10000 crores in a country which is growing uh, at a extremely fast pace um, and is poised to grow even faster 
uh, is is quite uh, you know disappointing, right? So one, I think funding, even though announcements are big, the reality on the ground is very weak, in my opinion. Second, um, I think uh, the the most expensive form of uh, you know funding is equity. Now the government might have done a few things, and obviously our friends from the PE and the VC community are deploying billions of dollars in in, in the country. But the problem is that it's very very expensive. You end up giving a lot of your stake upfront. So the debt structure, which is the normal channels, I think the government has to uh, has a long way to go. to open those up because without those debt uh, structures which are easily available in uh, developing countries i don't think uh, you know the the uh, wind is going to get beneath the wings of many many companies and they will not be able to scale up and then the final point is on ease of doing business i think ease of doing business even though we all claim uh, it it's happen it's happening i can tell you from tax authorities to gst authorities to getting approval for a building to getting um, compliance is done it is still a lifetime away from ease <laughs> you know forget doing business ease is not in the in, in the realm of things right now anything specific uh, that you would want to point out uh, in in when you say uh, ease of business doing this so i think uh, you know i i would say for example you know we are in the uh, you know co working business and we do uh, real estate uh, is at the core of the starting point of setting up a center setting up a center requires 26 licenses I mean, it's just you know. I mean, how in the world are you supposed to open up a center and get it going and and support the you know the startup ecosystem when you need twenty six licenses to you know start the operations? And many of those are so archaic that you know the government agencies themselves don't know if those licenses are required or not. So uh, I think that's one. Second, I think still a lot of work to be done on the tax. taxation itself right uh, as a startup the last thing you want to do is uh, every year even though you make a loss you have to go get into an assessment process right um, irrespective if you raise funds you will get assessed which is kind of unfair in the broader scheme of things and gst even though the government has done a lot i think it's still a long way to go um, in those three regards you know you talked about uh, you know that the fund fund being announced and the small amount that has got this first possibly because i don't know possibly because uh, they're not sure where to put those funds so you know but in the government circle i assure you that i have seen bureaucrats of the best of minds of the country were sitting there take, making these decisions but still there seems to be some kind of disconnect if that is the case as we were, as we were discussing uh, that you know things have been announced but have not got implemented so where do you think that disconnect lies i mean is it the mindset or is it the reluctance or is it the way things have happened maybe in the past and that's why uh, we are taking very cautious steps yeah I, I, again i just feel like uh, our inability to be able to move forward um on anything um that we kind of plan out i think because there are so many uh, what if scenarios um at play and i think you know just taking off of what amit was saying just from a uh, ease of doing business even you know the startup india was meant to make a simpler process for registration of startups but the regulations that you have to def- that that are defined for a startup are so specific that like half of my startups can't aren't able to so i mean the, it defeats the purpose of of, of the of the registration process uh, which defeats the purpose of the angel tax it defeats the pur- i mean the the uh, you know uh, the, uh, the inability to take advantage of it an uh, inability to take advantage of the the patent applications um and of course the inability to be able to access these this 10000 crores which even if you were in the startup india you can't access anyways based you know uh based on their inability to decide whether they want to actually do it or not at at some point I, I mean, whether it's because they just don't—it's not a priority, or they don't know what to do with that money. Um, they they should they they should decide that it's not available because what happens is the process is still there, and so people think they can get it, and that takes time. It takes people's time and effort. And I think to a, a large extent, this was what was said a little bit earlier as well. The government for them, it's it's a plan, but for. people on the ground is their livelihood it's their life they're taking a decision to go in a certain direction that shouldn't be there so i think um, if there was something 
I would want the government to do is just if they're going to say and do something, make it as as open door as possible, or don't do it. Um, so, and and I think that the 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 phrase of ease of business actually that Amit is using, I think, is a great one. If there was something I would want in the next decade, whatever you do, make it slightly easier. Don't have to make it completely easy. You don't have to follow any guidelines from foreign countries, but anything, just make it incrementally easier. You, you can't go from 26 licenses for uh, uh, one of Amit's offices to one license. Okay, don't promise that. From 26, make it 20. Uh, oh my God, Amit's life will change. <laughs> you know, uh, time will change, stress will change. Uh, so we don't need, I mean, as much as it's been very helpful from PR perspective, we don't need, uh, you know, large umbrella statements. We need on the ground, small incremental change. And that will be more than enough for this for us to thrive we're thriving in spite of all this uh in spite of all this is thriving so any incremental change will just help that momentum get far, further mm -hmm. okay okay Janesh, any final thoughts uh, because we will be running out of time so you know for for you know i i heard uh, amit uh, i heard uh, it's so final and and I'll, I want to add one more thing that in, you know, the government, not only from the policy perspective, but, uh, you know, in, in, in the recent past, we've seen that some of the bans that happened or some of the interventions from the government in terms of, uh, you know, using which app or not has uh, boosted some some of the Indian app. So do you think it's a it's a healthy thing or do you think it's just a temporary blip and it will all be, you know, square one again? So final thoughts, everyone, and then we can move on to the award. So, David, I mean, I, I don't agree that what what government has done is going to go to square one, right? I think we have moved a lot from where we were, right? I mean, it's it's a question of giving time to the government machinery also because even if the government, let's the Prime Minister's office, Honorable Prime Minister makes a statement, to reach to the to the guy who's going to front end and talk with me, Sid or Amin, we'll get some time. He is waiting for his notifications to come, his approvals to come from the top bosses. He also needs freedom to take decisions beyond a point, right? Because we we it just is a is a situation that whenever the government makes statement, but the person at the at, at the at the bottom, I mean, he doesn't get the information in the right format what he is required to follow, and that is where the frustration creeps in, right? It's like Amit has been told that we're going to do get ease of business, but the guy who's going to get license has zero clue why he should be helping Amit to do more in an easier manner, right? And that is going to take time because India is a federal structure, right? We have central government who have so many departments, so many ministries, reach out to that. Then you are on the state governments, every every place where Amit opens the office, there are a few state licenses which are required. And he is he will always keep on fighting for the same new new licenses in every state. And in spite of all the intent, I'm not blaming whether it's UPA government, NDA government, everyone's trying their, their level best to get the bureaucracies to move farther, move in, in a better stage, right? And that will take time. And I, I mean, so I believe that these are the smart people who create the, the highest ranking exams in this country. I think it's just a question of getting the communication channels right. I mean, Prime Minister Modi has been doing direct communication to all people, but I think at some point, even the bureaucrats need to have direct communication. The day you can see that, I think things will improve. But I don't see we going backwards. I mean, I see that this country will keep moving forward no matter what happens. Yeah, I'm sure about that. So uh, we have run out of time, so we'll have to wrap up here. But uh, thank you, every, uh, thank you, gentlemen, for being here. And I, uh, the the uh, the the optimism that you have shown today, uh, you know, despite uh, I mean, having to look for 26 licenses maybe, and Jinish and said uh, about thinking about the tax the tax notices that they might be getting on their next investment. Uh, optimism sure will take us ahead and uh, uh, we, uh, I wish that we'll see you again sometime uh, later. Uh, I request you to please uh, stay on for a while while Muskan announces a few awards. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>